Welcome to another Photoshop tutorial from tutorvid.com. This tutorial is going to show you how to remove a background from an image and end up with something like this when you're starting out with something like that. So it's best to start out with a simple as background as possible. You can do it with a busier background, but you'll just end up uh, doing more picky work. So first thing you need to do is add a background to your photo. So I'm going to go and grab a photo. These photos are available on realstockphotos.com and you can get them for $5 or you can get them on tutorvid.com. All right, so first you find your background and you can just drag and drop it into Photoshop. If it's not large enough, you can just grab the corners here and resize it. I'm holding down the shift and alt button so it resizes all corners at the same time. And then you'll have to press this check mark here and that'll save it. Now you can see you've got your two layers here, your background image and your original layer. Now we want this guy on top, so we want to unlock this layer. Right now it's locked, so we can't really move it or anything. So we're going to grab this lock, just click and drag, and put it in the garbage bin. So now this is a regular layer, and we can drag and drop it on top of our background. Alright, so isolating this guy from the background. The first step, I'm going to grab the magic wand with the W button. And then since this background is such a nice even color, I'm just going to quickly and roughly click and drag and that'll select most of the green. It doesn't matter if it uh, selects a little bit wrong. This is just a really rough estimate. I'm going to zoom in here. It took a little bit too much. I'll fix that just to make my life in the next step a little easier. I'm using the Alt button, which gives me a minus, which will take away from my selection. All right, so that's close enough. You can see around the hair, that the selection needs to be edited and around the arms we're getting pretty close. Uh, the other problem I have right now is that the grass is selected and not my guy and I need to select my guy so I'm going to inverse my selection and I do that by pressing Control shift i or you can right click on the selection and select inverse right here. Alright so now to further modify my selection I'm going to right select and click refine edge or it's also available up here in Select and Refine Edge, or press alt Control r Now we have this Refine Edge box, and I'll go through these uh, various options and try to tell you what they do. The View, that's just how we want to view our image here, our selection. Uh, you can play and look around at these different settings. For this one, I'm going to put on White to start with, uh, so you can sort of see how it's doing along the edge. The first one here, Smart Radius, that tries to let Photoshop decide how uh, far outside and inside your selection Photoshop should look for the edge. I'm just going to leave that off for now. Smooth, if we zoom in here, you can see right now the selection is sort of jagged. If we up the smooth, that'll smooth out our selection so there's no sort of sharp edges and uh, makes it a little more natural. Feather, um, feathers the edge and in uh, most selections or most sort of people on a background, it's never a hard zero pixel edge there's always some sort of a feathery blur to the edges. So I usually put around two and that helps it sort of blend into the background. Contrast is how sort of hard the edge is going to be. And I'll leave that at zero for now. And shift edge, um, right now our selection is right along here. And you can see there's a little bit of green along, along most of the edge. So by shifting the edge, I can reduce that a little bit. I can put in, for example, negative two, and that just moves the selection in by two pixels everywhere. And that also sort of helps isolate our subject a little bit and get rid of our green background. And the last one, output, decontaminate colors. If we're shooting on a chroma screen, for example, or this one on green grass or any other color, this decontaminate colors will remove the sort of green halo that goes around everything and you can determine how much or little that happens. And the output will, where you want the selection to be output to. Um, I'll get to that in a second. And so let's look at the edge of our outline here. Right now you can see here this should be selected and isn't. So now I have this brush, which is selected over here. And you can paint here and that tells Photoshop, take another look at this area, it needs to be fixed. And there it managed to fix it. Right now Photoshop thinks the edge is here, and it's right, it is there. And that's not perfect on the edge there, but we'll leave it for now. 
and along the hair that's where the, we're going to need most of the work um, it's not selecting here and there's lots of hair outside here that needs to be selected so I'm going to change the view first um, so I can see where to modify the edge and I'm going to show everything with reveal layer and now I'm going to paint and I'm going to add to the edge or the area that Photoshop looks at when determining the edge and so I can study all this and it'll add that to the selection you can't really see what's going on now perhaps I'll turn on the marching ant so you can see how it's sort of adding it if you want to see how wide your edges are everywhere you can click this show radius and that'll show how much is sort of being determined in your selection so right now here nothing extra is being added to our selection and up here all this hair is going to be added to our what's determined as the edge so I'm going to paint all this around the hair and add that to the selection you can watch my video on 10 ways to zoom around your image for ways that you can also use in this tool uh, amongst other things spacebar to slide the image around control plus control minus to zoom in and out or else you can use this magnifying glass and hand tool but it's quicker just to use the shortcuts all right so i'm just doing sort of a rough selection around the edge and painting the areas i want added to the selection okay so then uh, now that i've done that you can see how it's doing a little better if we put it on white and now you can see it's doing a quite a bit better job it's getting all the little curls here and here there's a little bit of green that we need taken out uh, so I'll add that to the selection and that managed to gobble it up a little bit here I think is missed all right so I'm going to view the full image and see how we're doing we've got a little corner here that has a little green on it so add that to the evaluated area Photoshop managed to get it all right so I think we're looking pretty good now we can choose to output our layer to a different sorts of things a new document we want to keep it in this document so I'm going to pick one of these top ones either a new layer or a new layer with a layer mask since I want to work on the layer mask a little more and have more control I'm going to put it to a new layer with layer mask and click OK now you can see here's our original layer layer 0 and now our new layer here with a copy now to get rid of these uh, sort of halo light areas around the hair we want to use the burn tool so you can press O or go over here and select burn tool and then make sure you're working on the layer mask and not on the image or something else so just click on the layer mask and if you're not sure how layer masks work uh, watch a tutorial on those you'll learn a lot and save a lot of time in Photoshop and then up here you've got some burn tool settings and put the exposure on 50% and the range work on the shadows so the reason this works is because there's lots of sort of gray tones in our layer mask that's sort of halfway uh, masking and when you burn it you make those areas black and so it's 100% masking so we can just burn and sort of make those areas more contrasty if we were in the previous tool refine edge this is sort of bumping up the contrast setting but doing it for just specific areas of the photo all right so i think that's pretty good for a start and one other thing you can do this background is really sharp because it was a landscape image to start with so I'm going to blur the background a little bit just to make it look a little bit more like a portrait so I'm going to click on my background and then go to filter blur and then I'll just add a Gaussian blur and I'm going to put it up at oh say 15 pixels and there you have it a guy isolated and that's all there is to it check out more tutorials on tutorvid.com